Are you having performance issues in your Flutter app as you scroll through a large number of items? If you load all of the items into memory at once, your device may not have enough resources such as its RAM and CPU. This can make your app slow down or even crash. In this video, I will show you how you can avoid performance issues by loading items into memory as needed. This means that you only load the items that are currently visible on the screen and you load more items as the user scrolls down. Let's add the latest version of Infinite Scroll Pagination for displaying items and HTTP package for fetching items from internet and get dependencies. Let's go to postmodel.dot file and create a postmodel class with ID, title, and body parameters passed to its default constructor. Let's go. Go to post widget dot dot file to create post widget stateless class with ID, title, and body as required parameters. Inside build function, we are showing posts in a column wrapped with single child scroll view padding and container for decoration. Next, let's go to infinite scroll pagination page and set the number of posts per request to twenty. Let's also initialize paging controller with object paging controller of type integer and post model. It helps us in detecting the scroll position and when the user reaches the end. Of the current page, the package fetches the next page data using the fetch page callback. Paging controller has one required property, which is first page key. We are setting it to one to start from page one. When loading more data, the package uses this key to determine which page comes next. It is important for the package to have a way to uniquely identify pages and their order in the pagination process. Inside init state, let's call the add page request listener method of paging controller. This method takes a callback function that will be called whenever the user The requests a new page, and inside this, we are calling the fetch page method and pass the page key as an argument. Fetch page is a custom method that we need to implement to fetch data for the specified page. This will be called whenever the user scrolls to the end of the current page and requests to load the next page. Inside fetch page method, we are using try catch block. Use this website to get mock data with ID, title, and body, along with page key and number of posts per request. Let's save the data of response in a Dynamic list by importing dot convert package. Then we are converting this dynamic list into a list of type post model using map function of list. Next, declare last page by comparing length of post list and number of posts per request. If it's true, then call append last method and pass post list to it. Otherwise, increment page key by one and pass it to append page method along with post list. Also, remember to dispose of the paging controller to avoid memory leaks. Inside build method. We are creating an app bar. Let's start the body with refresh indicator widget. We are calling refresh property of paging controller wrapped by future dot sync for its on refresh parameter. On refresh is called when the user drags the refresh indicator to refresh the app. Also use page list view widget of the package for child of refresh indicator. Page list view has paging controller and builder delegate required parameters. Let's assign paging controller variable to paging controller parameter, and we are using page child builder delegate for builder delegate. Page child builder delegate has multiple properties. Let's set the animate transition to true. It has item builder required property. It accepts a callback function that is used to build a widget for each item in the list. It takes three parameters. Context post model item and integer index of the current item in the list. We are returning post widget here. Let's rerun the app and see the output. As we scroll, the infinite scroll pagination package dynamically fetches and loads additional data, creating a seamless and continuous experience, allowing us to explore the content effortlessly. Let's also check if refresh indicator is working. First page progress indicator builder is builder for the first page progress indicator. We are returning circular progress indicator here. No more. For items builder is builder for an indicator that all items have been fetched. We are returning padding widget with no more data message at the bottom of the list. Page child builder delegate also has other properties like first page error indicator builder, new page error indicator builder, new page progress indicator builder, no items found indicator builder, and transition duration. So this is how to fetch data from an API in small chunks or pages as the user scrolls down the screen. It is particularly useful. when we have a large data set thank you